Hello guys and welcome to my channel. My name is Jes Bufferson and uh, today we are going to talk a little bit more about uh, a molecule called uh, betaine or uh, trimethylglycine. Uh, we have spoken about it uh, before and uh, there we spoke about it um, in the sense that uh, we would like to plump up uh, the skin. So we would like to put more moisture into the cells so that um, the skin uh, stands out as being more uh, plump. And uh, that uh, betaine is uh, really uh, good for. Um, something else uh, betaine uh, is uh, really good for and which I have had uh, experience uh, with uh, myself um, is that if you just look at it uh, it just looks like a, a package uh, like this uh, and it doesn't say anything I buy from something called the bulk powders and have nothing to do with them but that is just where I find it to be the cheapest at the moment uh, and then at the back it says uh, trimethylglucine and that is something that is also called a betaine um, we spoke about it uh, in order to plump up the skin but uh, when I uh, came across uh, betaine uh, first, um, it was to plump up uh, the skin uh, and it was also in order to get more uh, glycine into uh, my uh, body. And uh, I will talk about that uh, in another video uh, where we will talk about how it uh, helps with the uh, collagen uh, production. So uh, in this video here I would uh, tell you about how it has had an effect uh, in a way that I have seen it and that is uh, because uh, some years ago uh, my husband uh, John he uh, and he, he does the filming um, he um, had some issues with uh, his ears and uh, he uh, had this uh, syndrome where you he couldn't really hear something now and then because it was like he was up uh, in an airplane and it uh, was because uh, what is called the eustachian tube uh, that uh, blocked and that is uh, the tube that goes from your mouth and to uh, the middle ear so when you're up flying uh, that will block or it will be um, squeezed and uh, then uh, air will not go back and forth and that's why you have this uh, sort of um, locked feeling in your ear when you're up flying so he had it uh, when he was uh, grounded and uh, that was obviously a problem. So he went to a lot of doctors in order to have uh, a look at that. And uh, they were like, oh yeah, we can uh, look at your ears and know oh, that yeah, we can just clean your ears and we do this and we can do that and so on. But nothing really helped. And uh, their answer was just like, well, the, then you just have to live with it. So uh, I looked uh, a little bit uh, on the internet and I found uh, a girl who said that she had had uh, the same problem and she uh, used uh, retinyl palmitate. So she used uh, a preform of uh, vitamin A and uh, that worked in a way that um, it makes uh, the mocus uh, that are in uh, the eustachian tube and we can make it uh, stick, um, made it more... Um, liquidy so that it was easier for the eustachian tube to to work so um, that meant taking uh, rather a lot of uh, not uh, vitamin a as such and not uh, retinol but uh, pre-retinol so uh, retinyl palmitate and uh, that did absolutely help uh, with that uh, problem now then uh, we did that for some years and that was fine but uh, it doesn't really cure the problem it was just like Yes, it definitely had uh, an impact, so that was really good. So it wasn't, wasn't um, as often it happened uh, as otherwise it would have been. And usually it would happen if uh, you had the pulse going or if you were in a meeting and you were really focused on delivering something or something like that, then uh, it could start to block. Um, so what uh, we realized recently was that uh, when we started to use uh, betaine, it happened uh, at a time when uh, we ran out of uh, retinue palmitate and it was uh, difficult to get it and uh, still we are waiting for it. Uh, so um, what uh, we noticed was that uh, there no longer was this problem with the ear. And uh, that was a bit like, uh, that, that's odd, but uh, maybe it's just because um, you had a lot of storage of uh, retinue palmitate uh, in your liver and that is why it will last a bit more. But it was just like the problem stopped altogether. So uh, I looked uh, a bit more into betaine for other reasons and I came across an article that explained that actually when uh, they were making um, scientific uh, investigations on um, the liver and uh, if uh, they were punking a, a liver with uh, alcohol then uh, obviously the liver is uh, not working that well and some damage will happen. So when they gave uh, betaine or trimethylglucine um, then uh, they found that um, the liver started to function better and one of the things uh, they found was that actually the level of uh, vitamin A uh, went uh, up 
and uh, that uh, sort of uh, rang a bell in my head because I thought, well, uh, if uh, retinue palmitate helps uh, with um, the ear, with the uh, eustachian tube, um, and then we are now having something that uh, is working in order to uh, make uh, vitamin A in uh, the liver, so in the body as, as such, maybe there is a connection there. And maybe uh, the reason for the problems with the uh, eustachian tube was that your body was not, um, or my husband's body was not uh, working uh, properly in order to uh, make a uh, retinol uh, in the body. So uh, from uh, punking the body with the uh, retinue palmitate and that way forced the body to produce more retinol and from there on retinoic acid, uh, then uh, we could now start to not take retinue palmitate apart from what we are getting normally from uh, our normal food. Um, and then uh, betaine would actually help uh, with uh, making the liver uh, do uh, its job and uh, make a uh, retinol or uh, and uh, retinoic acid so uh, by that uh, it was helping the uh, eustachian tube in order to uh, work better so uh, that is uh, obviously not i have not seen any sort of uh, studies that uh, confirms uh, what i have noticed or what we have noticed i just see that there are something working in one way when i take a certain uh, supplement and when i don't take that and i take something else that are working in the body in order to make use of that uh, supplement which i would normally get from uh, the food then there must be some sort of a uh, connection now uh, as i have uh, said before or maybe i haven't said it in a video but i have uh, certainly uh, said it in some of the um, when you are asking me uh, about various things, I explain why I'm doing so and so. And uh, a lot of the reasons behind doing those things that I do or that we do uh, is that uh, my husband, he has a, a disease uh, that is called a myotonic dystrophy. And that uh, makes a lot of uh, changes in the body. So um, something else uh, that uh, we noticed was that uh, he started to get uh, some issues with his eyelids. So uh, what was uh, going on suddenly was that, uh, yes, you can have a sty now and then. So a sty that is a, a blocked um, oil gland in your eyelid. So uh, that can happen to anyone at any given time. And uh, usually you just take a, a bit of uh, warm water and you hold it onto it and it will burst and then it will be kind of fine. Then uh, there are people who has uh, recurring uh, styes, and that is uh, not a nice thing to have. And um, again, we went and saw uh, a lot of doctors, and uh, they turned the inside out of the eyelid and looked at it and did all sort of things and gave all sort of medicaments in order to um, solve uh, the problem. But uh, at the same time said that, well, that is just something you will have to live with. Now, uh, these uh, oil glands, they uh, can get uh, blocked and um, when your oil glands are getting blocked, then uh, it can be because there is something sitting there uh, that is uh, drying it, uh, you know, annoying it in, in some way. But it can also be that uh, the oil simply is uh, not uh, liquid enough um, and therefore it will start to block uh, in itself and then uh, you get... Uh, a block and then you have uh, the bacteria that are naturally on your skin anyway uh, they will start to feast on it and then you get uh, inflammation so uh, that would be something that would uh, be an issue like constantly and therefore it would be that every evening he had to uh, use hot water compressions on it and do all those sort of things and at one point we actually bought a um, an infrared uh, light uh, mask to put on and that would kind of like heat the eyelids um, that resulted in the eyelids being uh, dry so that is something you should be a little bit cautious with but they are sold on the internet and um, for that uh, purpose now uh, what we realized was that suddenly there was no problem anymore and uh, we thought well what could have changed and uh, nothing really had changed apart from that uh, we were no longer taking a uh, retinol um, or the um, pro retinol the um, uh, retinol palmitate uh, but we were taking a uh, betaine or the trimethylglucine and uh, again if that has some sort of uh, function uh, with uh, having the body working in order to produce retinoic acid uh, in the body, um, then uh, that could uh, explain why we suddenly saw that uh, the problem with uh, 
the uh, the star uh, was uh, going away and uh, this is not something that you should start taking a uh, bitter in because you've had a star now and then or like uh, last year you had one or something like that this is something that can help you if you are having recurring styles like you constantly every week need to do something in order to make sure that uh, the problem will not uh, come uh, again and again uh, and again so uh, that uh, tells me that uh, something is going on with uh, some of those things that are either oil glands or it could be uh, mucous membranes uh, in the body where uh, vitamin A uh, or retinoic acid would have a um, an impact on it. Now uh, retinoic acid and uh, retinol and uh, all that sort of thing you hear a lot about. So it's not about eating retinol as such or um, eating um, some uh, sort of uh, very strong uh, vitamin A products. So it is a little bit uh, complicated, but uh, the point of uh, this video was to say that if you are having uh, issues with the uh, blocked ears, uh, the eustachian tube, or if you are having a uh, recurring styes, then uh, bitter in might be something uh, that could uh, help you. So uh, you might be wondering how much uh, do I take? Well, at the moment we are taking uh, two uh, scoops of uh, these ones here. And uh, I think it comes with the bag, or there might be a smaller one in uh, the bag. Uh, but usually uh, bulk powders, they supply uh, this one here. But anyway, there are four grams uh, of bitter in, in a scoop like this. And I take, we take one in the morning and we take uh, one in the evening. So in the morning, I take it in, on my fromage frais. And in the evening, I take it in a glass of water. And it is a uh, sweet. Uh, it actually comes from a uh, beta bulgars and uh, bulgars and uh, that is uh, sugar beet so that is uh, something that is uh, sweet and uh, it will sweeten your yogurt it will sweeten uh, your fromage frais or a glass of water and um, yeah so it doesn't taste awful it is easy to consume and it doesn't really cost uh, a lot so uh, yeah if you have recurring styles or you have issues with uh, the eustachian tube this uh, could be something uh, for you to try out i will make uh, more videos uh, about um, glucine uh, because the glucine uh, which i have in this package here it looks ex exactly the same the package it just at the back says a glycine instead that uh, works in a different way uh, in the body uh, than uh, bitter eat does because it is two different forms of uh, glucine. So one of them is a trimethyl glucine. So there are three uh, methyl groups on it. And the other one is uh, the uh, amino acid uh, glucine. And that works in a different way in the body in order to uh, produce, uh, for example, collagen and so on. And I will talk uh, about that in a upcoming uh, video. So uh, yeah, if you would like to see that one, please subscribe, hit the bell and do all the things you must do in order to be notified when I upload more of this sort of videos. Thank you for watching. See you. Bye.